The electric trolley car was part of Salem, New Hampshire's history beginning in 1899. Charles Barnes of Malden, Massachusetts, part owner of the Hudson, Pelham, and Salem Trolley Company, envisioned a streetcar network that would link Haverhill, Lawrence, and Nashua. Consolidation of the various trolley companies resulted in Mr. Barnes becoming the owner of the Massachusetts Northeastern Street Railway Company. At the time, all across America, trolley systems were introducing a freedom of travel that most people had never experienced. Part of Barnes's plan was to include an amusement park on the shores of Canopy Lake. This was considered a necessary feature to attract heavy ridership on weekends in order to ensure his company's financial success. By 1900, the back-breaking work began, and in the summer of 1902, the vast hand-built system of roadbeds, rails, overhead power lines, and support facilities were built. A large maintenance facility, which was known as the Car Barn, was built and still stands today at 179 Main Street. The trolley era was a very important time in the growth of Salem, New Hampshire, because over 180 men were employed by the trolley company. Most of these men lived in Salem. O.R. Cummings, noted trolley historian, was interviewed in 1992 and explained it best. The Salem Car Barn was the uh, main house, the main shops of the Mass Northeastern system. Now that would include a uh, a Salem, it would include a, repair uh, a paint shop, a uh, general re repair area where armature winders, well, they did everything at Salem. They wound their motor armatures, they repaired controllers, they did every possible trade. You had 184 people working out of the Salem barn. 89 motormen and conductors. It had 59 barn employees, 36 track employees. That was in August 7th, 1920. 184 people was a substantial uh, labor force for the town of Salem because most of the people lived there. Uh, they lived close to where they worked at that time. You couldn't commute 40 miles to work then, like you do today. And that was an important consideration within Salem because so many people working there. You didn't have large industries in Salem. The largest industry was really your car barn. And second largest was Canopy Lake Park, but that was only seasonal. The first trolley rolled into Salem in July 1902. Just as it is today, Canopy Lake Park was a wholesome family resort and the trolleys heading toward Canopy were packed to capacity each weekend with wager folks anticipating a fun day. People wore their best clothing and showiest hats for a visit to the park. The park had it all, swimming, bowling, a carousel, a steam train, boat rides, and of course, a walk down lover's lane. The park was renowned for its beautiful gardens and picnic areas. The park flourished for 30 years, but in the late 1920s, the trolley company was in trouble. The falling prices of automobiles and the newfound freedom that autos offered sent the trolley company into bankruptcy and Canopy Lake Park with it. The park sat abandoned for two years. In 1931, Patrick Holland purchased the park. He had made his money building roads and knew that the park needed to accommodate automobiles and buses for it to survive. In eight weeks, he constructed a new entrance on North Policy Street, where it is today, and a parking lot big enough to accommodate 5,000 cars. In 1936, Holland added a giant modern roller coaster. It had been built in 1930 by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, and it is the same ride you see today. It is known as the Yankee Cannonball and is the state's only surviving wooden coaster. It is rated as one of the nation's 10 best wooden coasters by the American Coaster Enthusiasts Organization. The big band era was here, and Holland brought the best of the best to Canopy Lake Park to perform. Glenn Miller, Artie Shaw, Guy Lombardo, Duke Ellington, Les Brown, Vaughn Monroe, Peggy Lee, Benny Goodman, 
Earl Hines, Frank Sinatra, Tommy Dorsey, Tony Bennett, and Patti Page were only a few of the top name artists to appear. Sadly, in 1943, Holland passed away. His family continued to run the park until 1957. The big band era was winding down and so was attendance at the park. The park was purchased by three businessmen, Lou Captel, Casimir Ulaki, and Anthony Burney. They and their families still own and operate the park today in 2009. Thanks to their previous background with amusements and insight, the park took a turn for the best. In the early 1960s, rock and roll came to the Canopy Lake Park Dance Hall, and every Friday night, Dave Maynard of WBZ Radio would host his popular sock hops, featuring a different singer or rock and roll band. The list of new entertainers included Bobby Rydell, Brenda Lee, Ray Charles, Diana Ross, Glenn Campbell, Herman's Hermits, Gene Pitney, Little Anthony and the Imperials, the Beach Boys, Sonny and Cher, and many more. I got you, Canopy Lake Park has been an integral part of Salem's economy since 1902. It has provided employment and entertainment for thousands of residents of Salem, Merrimack Valley, and for all of New England. It has contributed to the growth of the town by creating electric trolley train travel between Haverhill, Methuen, Lowell, and Nashua when the only other way was horse and buggy. It is a huge part of Salem's history to remember always. The Massachusetts Northeastern Street Railway is a huge part of Salem's history. And now, 100 years later, we still have our beloved Canopy Lake Park to keep the fond memories alive. 